right, I think it's be ready or it's time to begin. Whether we're ready or not, it's another story. <laughs> it's good to see you all here today. I'm so glad you're here and ready to praise and worship the Lord. Amen. Again, the Lord is here today and just open your hearts. He will move in your hearts in a mighty way. Just open up and receive him. Amen. Heavenly Father, we worship. We praise you, Lord. We stand before you in awe today. Lord, I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you come and just spread over this congregation. Lord Jesus, move in a powerful way. Lord, we are excited to be in your presence, and we are excited to see what you have today. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Yeah, give me a clap. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's do this. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise. Arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let prayers arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Survive when we praise you, the God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lifted high. All creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, let faith be the song that overcomes the agency.
glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, let's rock the house today with our praises. We cry hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Jesus.
miracles for me daily, Lord Jesus, and I walk in your light and your strength. Oh, Father, that is my prayer, Lord Jesus, that I will walk daily down the straight and narrow, Lord Jesus. Lord, I don't want to falter. Lord, keep me strong. Keep me courageous. Glory to you.
across, Lord, on dry ground. Hallelujah. We fight those battles in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we are victorious in your name. Oh, we are victorious, Lord Jesus. Lord, my faith is in you, Lord. It may look bleak, Lord Jesus, but you give me hope. Lord, you give me courage, Father, when we praise you. in this region, God. We stake, put a stake in the ground, God. We say this area is yours, for your kingdom shall grow in Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name, we expand our tent pits in this area, God. We declare that many will come to know you as their Savior through signs and wonders and miracles, God. Do it, Lord. Do it, God. Do it, God. provide a way. You will do it again for them, Lord Jesus. You will move the mountains. Lord, you will offer them protection. You will offer them way out. You will offer them hope, Lord Jesus, because their hope is in you. Lord, we lift them up before you, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would hover over them. I push back the attacks of Satan over that country, and I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to push them back. Push back the evil attacks of Satan in the name of Jesus. Put them back where they came from. Hallelujah. Lord, we claim victory for Ukraine. We claim victory. Hallelujah. Lord, we claim victory for America. Hallelujah. We will stand again, one nation under God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. We will reign in freedom. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You Lord, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Oh, glory, Jesus, glory to your name. Lord, we seek your face. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Lord, I seek your face. to be mouthpieces for you. Help us to show your love to them. Help us to not be rear ends when we're confronted with circumstances that we don't know about, don't want to control, and we don't like. Help us to be nice. Help us to be a good witness in this community, in the communities around you so that they'll say, I see that, and I want to be like that. I need whatever they've got. We're willing, Father, and we ask you to bring them in. We ask, we ask in the name of Jesus. Thank you. 
This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the place make a dead man walk again. Oh, man, the friend, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling.
This is how you will be ready to minister on the streets, in the stores, when you are filled with the word of the Lord, when you know the word, when you have studied the word, when you have meditated on the word, when you have memorized the word. sitting right now between you and the Lord ask him right now whatever need you're facing whatever family situation you're going through whatever it may be ask the Lord right this very moment between you and him ask him to meet that need right now Jesus, we brought these needs before you this morning, and we followed what you've instructed us to do, to ask of you. And Lord, we're asking of you this very moment and expecting you to show us great and mighty things. Lord, we thank you that you tell tell us in your word to ask, seek, and knock. And Lord God, we're asking, we're seeking, and we're knocking upon your throne room today, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you for the promises that you've given to us, Lord, but that all things are possible to them that believe. 
And Lord God, we're going to give you the praise and glory in advance for these miracles that are going to take place, for these relationships that are restored, for the bondages that have been, uh, been lifted. Lord God, we know that you're able to do abundantly above all we think, ask, or even imagine according to the power that's working within us. And Lord Jesus, we give you the praise and glory right now for all that you're going to do and all that you have done. For you are still the great I am. You're not the great I was, but the great I am. And there is nothing impossible with you. And Lord, we accept that and we receive that today. In your precious name we pray. In your precious name we pray. And all God's people who agreed said, Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Power of God's in the house again. And you know what? Grace Point Church is still in revival. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome all of you today to Grace Point Church and all those who are watching online. We're so glad that you're joining us today. And we believe something strongly here at Grace Point Church is that our past does not define our future. Everyone agree with me on that? And the reason that is, is simply because of God's grace and His mercy in the cross of Calvary. Our mission here also as a church is to connect people to God's grace. It's important that people find the grace of God in their lives. And also, if you're watching online and you're looking for a home church, we give you an invitation to, to check out Grace Point Church. We're not a perfect church, but we love Jesus and we're growing. And one of the things about Grace Point Church is that we are not ashamed to be a Pentecostal church. We're not a church who's ashamed to uh, allow the gifts of the Spirit to flow and move in the service. As a matter of fact, we're eagerly, eagerly desiring spiritual gifts, uh, and we're allowing the Holy Spirit. We love for the Holy Spirit to flow in His service, uh, to move as He sees fit. That is, you know, we're not on this strict timeline where you know, everything has to fall in the 10-minute window and this has to happen next. We want the Holy Spirit of God to flow in our services and to move into our lives. And if you're watching again, if you're watching online, you're looking for a home church, consider checking us out. And I, like I said earlier, we are in revival right now. God has been demonstrating His Spirit's power. We're excited about coming to church. We're excited about being here. And I know one thing for sure. I want to continue in the revival that God has started. And, and I want to hear those dry bones rattling. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to continue in, in the, the, on this series, Dry Bones Rattling. And I can't tell you how long we're going to continue in this series. But we're going to continue in this series as long as the Holy Spirit leads me in this direction. And we're going to do what the Holy Spirit wants. You say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And what, what, what I want to look at today here is this. And I'll tell you how this message came to being. Is that we're living right now in a time where we're hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Everyone know what I'm talking about. And we're listening to all the, the sable rattling out there, and we're hearing people talk about, you know, uh, this is going to be World War III, and, and you know, possible, uh, you know, uh, nuclear bombs being thrown at people now, and all these kind of things. And we have a natural enemy, and we also have a spiritual enemy that's trying to instill fear in the child of God. They're trying to still fear into the, you know, in, in the lands around us and all that, so we will we'll bow down to the natural enemies and we'll bow down to the spiritual enemies. And, and you have to understand, these enemies are real, they're out there, and God has told us these kind of things are going to happen. But you know what, saints? I believe this to be true, and I know you do too. We still have nothing to fear when these things happen. We have these natural enemies. They're trying to snuff out our faith. They're trying to, to cause us to bow down to them. We have these spiritual enemies that are trying to cause us to bow down to them. But I know beyond any shadow of a doubt, my God is for us. And if our God be for us, who can possibly be against us? Then I started meditating on, on, on a silly thing, okay? How, how many have ever heard of smart weapons? Our military has smart weapons. And I remember, I think it was President Bush then, and we, we, when we invaded over there then, and they're showing these videotapes of, uh, and I remember this one specifically, uh, it was, I believe it was a, 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 um, a Jeep, all with machine guns and everything, underneath a bridge. And they fired this smart weapon, and that missile, and you watched it go down and go underneath and go underneath that bridge and blow that Jeep all to pieces and not touch the bridge. It's amazing. Now, I saw other things that our smart weapons were doing in the natural, just mighty things happening in, in the war, you know, and I'm not, I don't want war. Anyone else want war? I don't want war. But I know one thing, if I have to go to war, I want the best there is to go to war with. 
And the Lord st started speaking to me through the Holy Spirit. He said, you think you, your country's got great smart weapons? Let me tell you about my smart weapons. Amen. And so this series, we're going to start looking at some smart weapons, uh, continuing this series on looking at the smart weapons that God has given to us in the spiritual battles that we are currently in right now. Because I can tell you, until we leave this earth, we're going to face these kind of battles from time to time. But the good news is that we can have victory, not in our own strength, in our own might, but in the power of His might. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 10 through, 13, 10 through 13 starts this way. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. He says, be strong in what? Be strong in the Lord and the power of not my might, not the U.S. government's might, his might. Amen. And then put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take upon you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the day of evil and having done all to stand. God wants us to stand in these times that we're living in right now. How many are members of the kingdom of God right now? I want you to know right now you've got an enemy coming after you. The enemy's trying to attack you, but God wants you to stand, and he's calling each and every one of us into the spiritual warfare we're facing right now. Now, here's what I know about my God. My God would not call us into a spiritual war-type situation unless he knew we could have victory through that situation. And I also know this to be true. When God calls us into spiritual warfare, he will equip us with what is necessary to have victory over the enemy that we are facing at that moment in time. My my God has equipped us with multiple spiritual weapons that God wants us to walk in. And we need these spiritual weapons to stand strong in the faith, stand strong in, in our, our, our beliefs. We need to stand strong against the attacks of the enemy. And the only way we can do that is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And as we begin to stand in, in faith and believing, we are going to face enemy after enemy after enemy. But we do not have to be fearful. We don't have to walk in despair because victory is ours through the name of Jesus Christ. Remember that song we sing, Speak the Name of Jesus? Yes. Victory is ours. Now, I want to share some stories about people who faced spiritual warfare and came out victoriously. How many of you ever heard of the Dream Center in, in California? But probably most people know it. For years, Tommy Barnett, uh, he had, had a concern for the city of L.A., and he had pastored a church in Phoenix, Arizona, for uh, 10,000 members, but he knew that God wanted something to happen in L.A., but he knew it was impossible for him to pastor two churches. So his son at the time was 22 years old. His name was Matthew, and he also felt a call for, uh, to, to L.A. And what I love this morning was today we were feeling a call for Butler County today. People are starting to feel the call for this area, and I'm going, hallelujah, here we go. Now, I want you to know, if you're feeling the call, get ready, because the spiritual battles are coming. But we're going to be victorious. You say amen? And, and Matthew and his dad felt that all the gang killing and all the drug trafficking and all the prostitution, there needs to be a solution and answer to that. Can I tell you, government programs will never bring an end to those kind of things. But I can tell you what will. A revival of the Holy Spirit that touches people's lives and changes people's lives can change those kinds of situations. And they were tired of seeing the devastation in people's lives. And they knew something had to be done. And they knew they needed a dynamic Pentecostal church in the area to see things change in that area. They knew they needed a church that was going to be operating in spiritual weapons, super powerful spiritual weapons. So Tommy also went to visit the city and talked to a pastor who had been there for many, many years. And the pastor told him this. He cautioned him. He said, if you plan to come and start a church here, you have to understand the devil's jewel and pride is L.A. And he has a territory here. He has strong coats here. And he's got great strong here, coats here. And when you come here, you're going to face some of the biggest trials you've ever faced in your life. Now I'm thinking, Pastor, what's wrong with you? You should have said, come on, Pastor. The more, the merrier. Let's join together. Amen? And, and, and Pastor Bar and the Barnett said it was the greatest battle of their lives. They bought and finally bought an old, old, old hospital, turned it into a spiritual hospital, and it said thousands and thousands of people eventually came there. They had all types of ministry, but on one Sunday morning while Matthew was preaching, a man said, came up to him, he said, I'm going to make you very popular in this city. And, and, and Matthew, Pastor Matthew said, well, what, what do you mean? And the man then pulled out a gun from underneath his coat, and he says, I'm dying of AIDS. 
And after one of your services, I'm going to walk up on your platform. I'm going to shoot myself and kill myself. And all the city's going to hear about it. And it's going to bring a lot of attention to this church. Matthew tried to, you know, counsel the man. He's obviously was confused and overwhelmed with his condition. And Matthew said, sir, please don't do that. We can help you. And we'll do anything we can to get you the help you need. Then the man pointed the gun at Matthew and said, I have a better idea. I'm going to walk up here, shoot you first, then me. And that will really bring attention to this place. Matthew said he was shocked, but he could tell by the look on the man's face he was serious. And Matthew responded, well, sir, you could do that, but I know I'm going to heaven when I die. Do you know where you're going? Matthew paused for a moment, looked the man in the eye and says, I'm not afraid of you. I want to help you. And with that, it made the man very, very angry. He turned and hurried out. Out, out down the, the aisle and looked over his back and shouted, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it soon. Well, one of their weapons is prayer. Pastor got with some of his leaders, and they began to pray and pray and pray. Because they knew they were in a spiritual battle, and they knew that they needed spiritual smart weapons to take care of this. Because when the enemy rushes in like a flood, <laughs> the Lord our God is going to do what? raise a standard against him. Well, the man came back. He found one of the leaders of the church, and he said for some reason he felt so bad at what he said to Pastor Matthew, um, Matthew that he gave his heart to the Lord. You cannot ignore the teachings in the Bible on spiritual warfare. And I know many of these things I'm going to be teaching today, we've heard before, but I believe right now God is saying, prepare my people for war. Prepare my people to use the spiritual smart weapons that I have given unto them. And I know that we're living in a time, again, of wars and rumors of war that shouldn't shock us. The Bible says that's going to happen before the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But one thing I do know, Jesus Christ is coming again. And we need to be busy about our, our, our Father's business. And the first fact I want to look at today about our spiritual smart weapons is this. Number one, principalities and powers spoiled. Principalities and powers spoiled. Colossians 2 and 15 says this. Having spoiled. Now I want to stop there just for a second. Having spoiled. What tense is having spoiled? It's past. And what we're talking about here in this portion of Scripture has already been accomplished. Can I get an amen there? And this is something that we need to understand about our spiritual smart weapon here, this. And the spiritual smart weapon here is actually talking about the cross of Calvary. How many thank you for the cross? I love that new song we're learning. Thank God for the blood applied. I want to tell you, saints of God, it's through the cross of Calvary, the finished work of Calvary. It's what's so vitally important when it comes to spiritual warfare. I am so grateful to know that the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed once and for all. And the blood of Jesus Christ covers all our sins, all our situations. Thank God for the blood because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that heals my body and delivers me. Thank God for the blood of a cross of Calvary that has washed away my sins as far as the east is from the west. Hallelujah. Thank God for the cross. Amen. And so many today want to get rid of the cross. If you get rid of the cross, you don't have Christianity. The cross and Christ's sacrificial, life-giving sacrifice. Hallelujah. The principalities have been spoiled. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he, which Jesus, made a show of them openly, triumphed them over them in it. And that it is the cross. And the first thing I want to look at that word here is principalities. That word principality simply means evil spirits. There, is a evil, there are evil spirits out there. Can I get an amen? All you have to do is look around some of these areas, and you can see the evil spirits in action. They're moving and they're working. And that word powers in there too, principalities and powers. And powers are authorities. Say authorities. 
powers or authorities and rulers. And what happens, we have to understand this, is that Satan can take dominion over certain areas of the country. He takes dominion over certain areas. You've been some very, probably been some very bad places and you can feel the evil presence there because there's a dominion there. There are principalities and there's powers and authorities there. And these authorities and these powers rule in these areas. That's why you have such crime and such immorality. That's why you have such mass murders and kind of stuff. I can guarantee you in many of our inner city areas, these authorities and rulers are ruling in a great and mighty way. And I can tell you right now, they're trying to creep into small town rural America now also. And that's where we need to rise up in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ and begin to push those authorities and powers out of Augusta, Kansas, out of Butler, out of El Dorado, out of Andover, out of all the areas of Rose Hill around us. Push those principalities and powers out. Can you get an amen? amen. And we need to be aware of these things. It's one of the biggest dangers we have when we're in spiritual warfare is we don't recognize the enemy is there. And so many times, it's what he does. He doesn't give you a, a, a clue that he's there, but you see the results of it. But we have people who say, well, the evil doesn't exist. It's not real. I don't know what country they're living in or what world they're living in. All I have to do is look over at Russia right now and Ukraine. I can see the evil's there. I can look at the abortion industry and see the evil is there. I can see it. It's all around us. How many agree with me there? Now, before Christ, and I know we know this, but I want, to, I want us to understand this. Before Christ, before you're saved, you are part of Satan's kingdom. Satan is your king. And I know that upsets people. I'm a good person. I don't care how good you are. When it comes, you're not good enough to be anything like Jesus. And before we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're part of the kingdom of darkness. We're our king is Satan, whether we realize it or not. But I'm so grateful to know, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ through his cross has spoiled principalities and powers. And because he has spoiled principalities and powers, it means this, he has stripped them and disarmed them. That made me want to shout. I am so glad to know that these evil powers, they have been stripped of their authority and they've been disarmed and the authority in our lives. They have been spoiled. Amen. Now, I, I, I kind, of, kind of take this to the idea of going to your refrigerator. You know, how many always want to use all your leftovers? You put them in all these little things, these little Tupperware things, and you stick them in the back of the refrigerator, and you're going to eat that. And then three months later, you come back, and you go in there, and you go, what is that? Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's not penicillin, but it may look like it, okay? And you look at that, and what's happened to it? It's spoiled. It's no good. And what do you do with it? Well, I want to tell you, <laughs> the principalities and powers and the rulers have been spoiled for the child of God. Hallelujah. They have been disarmed because of the cross of Calvary in our lives. And again, that's past tense. It's already done. In the spiritual realms, we have authority and power over these principalities and powers. We have authority over their dominion. They no longer have a right to us because here's what's happening. Because of the cross, we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Because of the cross, we now serve a new king. We serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And now because of the cross, my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. And one day I'm going to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, because of the cross. What a mighty, super powerful weapon that we have, a spiritual superpower weapon through the cross of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, through the cross, I have complete freedom in Jesus Christ. Before the cross, Satan could take advantage of me. Through the cross, and his wonderful sacrifice, <laughs> Satan can no longer take advantage of me because I have been set free from all guilt. I have been set free from all sin. I have been set free from Satan's dominion. I am free in Jesus' name today. How many are saved today? Amen. You are free in the name of Jesus today. No matter how you feel, no matter what you're seeing, no matter what someone said to you, you stand upon the word of God. I am free in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am free. I am free. I'm free. Hallelujah. Before I was saved, there was nothing I could do. But now that I am saved, I have these spiritual smart weapons. Because hear me, now that I've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of righteousness, now Satan is trying to reestablish his dominion 
in my life. Satan's trying to reestablish his dominion in your life. That's why the battle is going on. But with our spiritual smart weapons, we can push back that attack. The source of the, uh, of the power of our spiritual smart weapons is in the cross of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. It's the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my soul rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11 says this, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant, say ignorant, <laughs> of his devices. This word advantage means to defraud or to exploit. And think about it. Satan has no right or authority in our lives whatsoever. So how does he get into our lives? It's called because he defrauds us. He exploits us. As Satan said to Eve in the garden, did God really say, thou shalt not eat of that fruit of that tree? Did God really say? Did God really say that he makes an exception for us when it's contrary to his word? What happens is that Satan begins to deceive us and, and, and exploit us, and you have to understand he defrauds us by us allowing ourselves to be exploited and to be defrauded. Amen? You know, that advantage, I want to declare today, Satan, you have no right to defraud a child of God any longer. You have no right to my kids. You have no right to my health. You have no right to my finances. You have no right to my business. You have no right to my grandkids. You have no right whatsoever. And we're not going to allow my family, you're not going to allow your family to be defrauded and exploited. We're going to stand together and strong together, and we're going to push back those principalities and powers that have them blinded this very moment. Can I get an amen there? Hallelujah. Lest Satan should get advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. This word devices means this. It means evil schemings. And I've got devices. I just put it back in here. Designs and sinister plans. Whether you realize it or not, and I know you realize it, Satan has nothing good to offer us. He's got these evil schemings. He's got these sinister plans. But the good news is this. We're not ignorant of it. <laughs> you know, and we must not display ignorance of our strength of our enemy, though. We're not ignorant of his devices. But you have to understand, and I know you understand this, Satan is real. He is our adversary. He's trying to take advantage of us. He's trying to deceive us. But we're not ignorant of his plans. And we cannot ignore him and say he's not there, he's not acting. And, and I'll tell you right now, it is a very dangerous thing not to believe that your enemy is there. Now, hear me here. This is very, very important. I know that the enemy is there. But I don't have to walk around in fear of that enemy because I have the spiritual smart weapons on my side. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. 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 But I have to pay attention and realize that he is trying to come. Satan made two major, major mistakes. The first, one of the major mistakes was this, was pride. Thinking that he could exalt his throne above the almighty God. And let me tell you, as Christians, we need to be careful that we don't get prideful and thinking, I don't need God to do this any longer. I don't need these spiritual weapons. I've been saved long enough. I speak in tongues long enough that I don't have to worry about any of this. I want to tell you that's a dangerous thing for us Pentecostal Christians to be full of pride. Because pride comes before, <laughs> comes and then a fall and a Holy Spirit before destruction, depending on how you, how you read it there. And saints, that was one of Satan's biggest mistakes. And the next one was this. He crucified the Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 2 and 8 says this, which none of the princes of this world knew, for if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And what it simply is saying, Satan had a plan. 
And that plan was to put to death the Savior of the world. But Satan was ignorant. He didn't know what the plan really was. Amen? But if Satan would have known it, the princes of the air, of the world here, if they had known it, they never would have crucified Jesus Christ. Because through the crucifixion, now we have that super smart weapon of the cross and his shed blood. Yeah. If Satan would have recognized any of that, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You know, that song we're singing, you know, dry bones rattling, Saturday was silent. And surely it was through. And all the caverns of hell were rejoicing. Friday was a big disappointment. Amen? <laughs> then Sunday's empty tomb. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since when is anything impossible? with him hallelujah i hear the sound i hear the sound of the dry bones rattling hallelujah hallelujah little did satan know that our lord and savior was going to descend to the lower parts of the earth there and go down not to suffer at the feet of Satan or at the hand of Satan, but going down as the victorious King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and going in and taking the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Thank God for the cross. Hallelujah. Thank God for the sacrificial giving of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Satan lost what he had stolen. Yes. He went back and took it. Jesus crushed Satan's head. And Satan bruised Jesus' heel. It's a prophecy being fulfilled from Genesis. Amen? <laughs> Little did the demons in hell know that Sunday was a coming. I want to tell you, saints of God, little did they know that that stone was going to hear the word of the Lord. And when God said, stone, move, that stone was going to move. Yeah. Little did they know. And if they would have known, they had never crucified the Lord of glory. But now they do know. And now they understand this truth that God is with us and God is for us and he has equipped us and he has empowered us with these spiritual weapons. And I want to say this right now. Whatever situation you may be facing, whatever you're going through, I want you to hold on to this truth. Sunday is a coming in your situation also. Amen. Hallelujah. Sunday is coming. Ooh, I kind of like what Deonza said. I can't wait to get to church. I got an email from a friend today or a, a few days ago, too. I couldn't wait to get to church on Sunday. That's what I want to see happen. When revival hits, we want to be in church. Glory to his name. If you're watching online, you want revival, get to church. Hallelujah. You know, I thank God again for our, 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 our online ministries. Thank God for it. But there's something so awesome and precious when God's people get together and worship and praise. I want to tell you the Shekinah glory will be in the place. God is going to move in the place. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Go back to Colossians 2 and 15. And here, again, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it, in the cross. And the idea here is victors, okay? You have to understand this is a kind of a military type phrase here is this. When a country would go in and conquer another country, they would take their prisoners of war and they would take them and they'd bring them back and there'd be a big parade in front of everyone else in their country that they are victors. But here's the bad part. They would strip the prisoners down to nothing. They would take all their weapons, they would take everything they had, and they would parade them through the town to humiliate them. I don't know about you, if, 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 if someone were to see this without any clothes on, you'd be, I'd be really humiliated too. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> no, be careful. <laughs> but who was humiliated there? The principalities and powers. Because of the cross, they were stripped. They were taken. The weapons were taken away from him. I want to tell you right now, saints of God, uh, that, that phrase there, the prisoners of war that were led naked as a display of the victor's triumph and the loser's humiliation. I want you to know today, saints of God, Jesus crushed Satan's head, and now he has been humiliated. Amen. He has been humiliated because he no longer has power and authority over God's people. Amen. Amen. Romans 16 and 20, I think you're going to like this verse. 
And the God of peace shall bruise. Now, I've got to stop there. That word bruise. In the Greek there is crush. And the God of peace. Who's the God of peace? Hallelujah. Shall bruise Satan's. Shall bruise Satan. What's that next word? Keep going. Who's the your? That's right. Say it. The God of peace shall crush Satan's head under your feet shortly. Hey, I like that shortly. I like that question. The trouble is my idea shortly and God's is different. But you have to understand in God's timetable, one day, a thousand years is one day here. You know, a day, a thousand. So in God's timetable, it's only been a couple days. But God's going to crush Satan underneath our feet shortly. Hallelujah. 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 And you know what that means there, saints? Is that you and I have entered into Christ's victory of the cross. We have entered into his victory. We've entered into his authority. We've entered into his power. We've entered into his anointing. And we get to share the victory with Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you right now, saints of God, I want to share more victories with Jesus. I want to share more victories with Jesus. I want to see more healings in this place. I want to see more deliverance in this place. I want to see people saved. I want to see financial needs taken care of. I want to see the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ go forth triumphant. I want to see victory after victory after victory until the trumpet of God sounds and we get taken out of this place. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to share in the victory. I'm an heir of God yes. and a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But it also means this. I get to share in. You ready for this? When the trump of God does sound and the church is raptured out of here and I get to share in that time when Satan is put in chains for 1,000 years. I get to share in that time and so do you when death, hell, and the grave, and Satan and all his demons are cast into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. Oh, that guy who's been harassing us and, and making us feel bad, who's been doing all these kinds of things against us, he is a loser. He's been humiliated. He's eaten dust right this very moment. And one of these days soon, shortly, shortly I'm going to get to share in him being cast forever and ever and ever into the lake of fire and never bother us again. Amen. There's a portion of the, uh, in, in, the, in the scripture, I think it's Old Testament, and I can't remember the, the, the reference right at the very moment, but it goes something like this. At the end, we're going to look at this one Satan and go, is this the one who has been bothering us and harassing us so bad? And boom, he's going to be gone. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. How many are glad you're in the house of God today? Amen. How many are glad that Satan's eating dust? Yes. How many are glad you got these spiritual smart weapons on your side today? Yes. Hallelujah. Revelation 19 and 20 says this, And the beast was taken, and, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. And you have to understand there's a false trinity here, okay? Satan copies everything that's true and right. right. And the, the false prophets, uh, the, the, the beast and the false prophets and all that also performed what? Miracles. Miracles. Keep that in mind, okay? Which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire with, burn, with burning and, and brimstone. Verse, uh, Revelation 20 and 10. The devil that deceived them was cast in a lake of fire and brimstone, and the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and ever. And verse 20, uh, Revelation 20 and 14, and death and hell were cast in a lake of fire, and this is the second death. Satan's final sentence is coming soon. He's already been defeated. He's already eating dust. But the execution of that sentence, that final sentence of being locked up forever and ever and ever is coming soon. And for us who are right where we need to be with God, we get to partake in seeing that happen. Glory to his name. God's good, isn't he? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that leads me to point two. That was point one. <laughs> so we may not get very far here. <laughs> it's okay. 
The deceiver is trying to take others to the lake of fire with him. Satan is still fighting from the dust. And the war for human souls is real today. Your soul, my soul. The souls of the unbelievers. And when revival has hit like it's hit now, and the Spirit of God's moving the way it's moving now, God wants us to enter into this thing called evangelism. I'm going to say it again. Satan has no right to take my kids to the lake of fire. Satan has no right to take your loved ones to the lake of fire. Satan has no right to take my health. Satan has no right to do those things. And we need to rise up and stand in faith believing. Standing in faith believing. He is a defeated foe and we're going to walk and our spiritual smart weapons. I'm going to share one more story, and I'm not going to get through this whole message, so we'll see what God does later. But <laughs> this is a true story. How many of you remember Lowell Lundstrom? Some of you are older in Pentecost. You probably remember him. He was an Assemblies of God evangelist. He was a president of Trinity Bible College. You think a president of Trinity Bible College and uh, Assemblies of God mission, uh, evangelist, big famous evangelist, would have no problems, right? And you think, man, I mean... His kids are going to be absolutely perfect, walking the straight and narrow. Well, isn't that right? They were raised in church. Well, anyway, Lisa Lundstrom, that's the daughter's name, grew up traveling with her father, Lowell Lundstrom. And Lisa began to wander far from God. Lisa felt like she wasn't good enough, um, she didn't have the music talent the rest of her family had, and she just decided, I'm going to leave home, I'm going to run away. And Lisa struggled to survive on her own at age 17, and the only way to survive that she entered into prostitution at 17. I can't imagine what it must feel like for a parent. The devil had convinced her that her family didn't want her, God didn't want her, she wasn't important, and so she simply left. Lisa, in her lifestyle, encountered many strange men during her years, her nine years in prostitution. And one night she met a man who had the strangest and had the strangest and the strangest type of deviancy that she'd ever ever met, ever seen before. She met him at a bar, and they went to a secluded house, and she soon learned why he was acting so strange. Sensing danger, she ran for the door, but he grabbed her, put a knife across her neck, and ordered her to lay down on a plastic bag. They come to find out later that he was a serial killer and already murdered 18 women. And Lisa was destined to be number 19. He, she sat in a trance-like state. He ran the knife up and down her body. But in that dark moment, Lisa remembered how to pray. Even though she knew her life was not the way it was supposed to be, she was living her life wrong, she prayed and believed God to hear her and her prayer was something like this, Oh God, don't let me die like this. I don't want my family to learn it ended this way. And what was not unknown to her at the time, Lowell and his wife were home and all of a sudden had a heavy, heavy burden to pray for their daughter, not knowing where she was at, where, where she, you know, they knew, any, knew anything about but a heavy, heavy, heavy burden. And they didn't stop praying until they felt that burden kind of lift. Well, all of a sudden, she said, she started to remember a presence that she knew before. And she recognized the Holy Spirit 
coming into that place where she was at. And all of a sudden, she recognized the Holy Spirit pushing out that man and pushing him back. And all of a sudden, the man got up, left her alone, went over and took his own life right in front of her. Now, wouldn't you think, God, I'm coming home. Three years later, three years later, she came to her senses, came back to know Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. God restored her. And now she goes around talking to teenagers about the dangers of running away from home. And I should have this quote up here next. It says, she says this to him, Sin will take you further than you've been, make you stay longer than you intended, and soon you're doing things you never dreamed you would do. But I want you to notice something here. Mom and dad... When they got that urgency to pray, that spiritual, super smart weapon, they prayed. But here's a hope I see in here too. Train up a child and the way they should go. And when they're old, they shall not depart. Now, I've heard people tell me that's not a promise from God. Baloney. That is a promise from God. And I want to say one thing also to parents here. Maybe you have kids that are straight away. And you're thinking, why did I do wrong? Why did it happen to me? Was God a good father? Was he a perfect father? Did he do everything right? And yet his kids rebelled from him and turn their back on him too for a while. So just because you have some kids that aren't where they need to be right now, don't give up. Keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking, keep praying, and believe that one day, one day, just like Lisa did, she'll come to her, they'll come to their senses and come back to serve Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now, I hope I'm around, and I hope you're around, if you have kids like that, to get to see it. You may not be, but I guarantee you this, your prayer will outlast you. And one day, I'm believing with you that we're going to see our kids around the throne room, and we're going to shout glory to his name. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is so good, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to quit there. That's only part way through the message, so we'll see what God does next week. But before we're dismissed, I need to make a couple announcements. God is good, isn't he? Yes. Hallelujah. I need to announce that we're having our annual business meeting uh, today at the church. At 5 o'clock, we're going to have a regular old pot blessing. So whatever you want to bring, bring in for a pot blessing. We'll share food together. Also, at, uh, at 6 o'clock, we'll have the business meeting in here. And at the business meeting, instead of having a devotional, we're going to do communion together. So I think that, that's a good thing. So keep that in mind. So the, the pot blessing starts at 5. The, the, uh, the business meeting starts at 6. So what time's the pot blessing? Five. What time's the, the, the service? Six. Uh, business, 6. Okay. All right. Praise God. Also, how many want to be debt free? Yes. I want to learn how to handle your money correctly. Yes. I tell you what, there's no greater joy in the world than knowing that your bills are paid in full. <laughs> You want to talk about freedom. Wow, that is freedom beyond you can even imagine. Well, we have classes that are going to be taught here by Brian Newport. They're going to start March the 22nd, uh, and there's going to be a nine-week course. And we are offering this not only to Grace Point Church, but to all those outside the community here. And we want people to learn to handle their money God's way. Money is not a curse. Money is neutral. Now, the love of it is a problem. But when you learn to use God's money, it's God's money, it's not your money. When you, you learn to use God's money correctly as good stewards, you're blessed over and over and over again. And these classes, again, are going to start March 22nd at 9 p.m., but you have to sign up online. There's this little yellow sheet out there. Do what? You said 7 to 8, 7 to 8, I'm sorry. I looked at nine weeks instead of that. That's what happens when you, I need to go see Dianza. <laughs> 
the 7 to 8 at the church. And you can go here and you sign up online. The, the number's here to sign up, and then you have to you pay for your course on there. And if you have any more questions about it, Brian knows more about it. But I guarantee you it's well worth the investment of your time. If you want to truly be set free from financial debt, you want to live in freedom and victory, you want to use your money correctly for the glory of God, you want to learn how to give more to the kingdom of God, I'm going to tell you when you're out of debt, you can give more. Amen. Amen. So see, see Brian after service and, and, and sign up on there. It'd be, it's going to be very, very good. Also, we have had Chris, Crystal Alexander scheduled for a Wednesday night. We've had to change all the dates around. The date, again, has been changed. Now we're going to have her on a, Friday, on, on a Wednesday night at, on March the 23rd here at the church. And I want to encourage you, it's hard to get missionaries in because the missionaries want to come to the big churches on the Sunday morning. And when you don't have Sunday night, you don't have Wednesday, it's hard to get a missionary here. She's going to come for that service. I believe God is going to use her in a great and mighty way. Uh, she's a missionary to Scotland. And I'm going to make sure we get Annie here for that, for that service. And we're just going to have a fellowship dinner before. We're going to come over and have, her, have a service here. I want all the church here on Wednesday night. I want the Royal Rangers, the Missionette, because our young people need to know about missions. Yes. Amen. We need to know about missions. And I think one of the ways for a church to be blessed abundantly is to bless God's kingdom and we bless God's kingdom through mission giving and through missions work, we are going to see God bless us. I've learned this to be true. You take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. And also, one other quick announcement. I need to meet with the board just briefly before we leave the place today. So, okay, I got a few board members in here somewhere floating around. So, but God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you tonight for the annual business meeting. Go in God's peace in Jesus' name.